hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of avg news only see the son of nobe is my name uh today uh the minister of home affairs south africa that is dr leon schreiber briefed the parliamentary portfolio on home affairs on the relook of the systems at home affairs he emphasized that as the new department under his watch takes over from the one that was left by his predecessor, uh, Dr. Aaron Mutsaleti, it has to look into introducing the new changes uh, without leaving itself uh, exposed to legal challenges that will get thrown out in court. He said it's not uh, an, an immigration law overhaul, but a new systems uh, look into. Uh, and we leave you watching what the minister said in full. Uh, we will now invite the, the minister to introduce or delegate to introduce the two presentations. Uh, all apologies have been recorded. Um, then we will we'll, we'll interact on responses and comments and members will have enough time to deal with the, uh, the, the coming day presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members. Good morning also to those members that are joining us uh, in this committee today for the first time. Uh, and also good morning to the DM and the team from the Home Affairs Department. Chair, you will know that I am very much able to introduce, but I think we're starting to uh, become very familiar with each other in this committee. Um, so I think the, what I would like to just very briefly touch on before I hand over to the team uh, is maybe just a high-level view on, on both of these items, if I may. Um, because I would like to express my gratitude to the Chair and, and to the committee for actually scheduling these ones on the same day because it's going to illustrate the interplay that actually exists between these two processes. So I would, I would urge members to look at these things as connected um, because they are dealing essentially with the same space. And that space really involves the, the high level view on the immigration system, citizenship and refugee protection that comes from the white paper, first of all. Uh, the process, um, Chair, is, is correct as you've outlined <clears throat> that this went through Cabinet uh, in April and at the one of the subsequent meetings the minutes also served and you could see that there were quite a number of points that were raised in that cap cabinet discussion and pointers that were given to the department to say go and refine this go and add in this space uh, so we've got that as one of the major inputs on the white paper that we will then need to um, process to go to go forward with into the bill uh, i think the other important input of course is from operation bullet lela itself and that's where the interplay will become clear where we have the opportunity to supplement some of this work uh, through making sure that the legal changes actually align with what the president and the administration have put on the table. I think one thing that's, that's very important, Chair, to caution against is uh, we should not have a misalignment between what the presidency and this department is doing in terms of modernizing home affairs and, and reframing re, re our, our systems and the white paper itself. And so I think that even as we move uh, into this space, it's important to get it right at the start. Because what we don't want is a bill that comes to this committee and then we've got the presidency, for example, saying to us, but this is misaligned with the work that we're going to doing. So the supplementation process flows out of the need to make sure that we have uh, really concrete and, and, and correct alignment on these issues. There's also a legal opinion that we have commissioned on the white paper to make sure that we are covered uh, and, and really comply with the injunction we've got in the, in the statement of intent as well of the government that we must always make sure that we align with the Constitution. And I think that's an important point actually, Chair, as we deal with international matters. Uh, our primary uh, injunction here is to comply with the South African Constitution. There's all kinds of international uh, spaces out there, um, but I think we need to check our policy and legislation always against what our Constitution itself demands. And so it's in that space that we will also then get that opinion. So uh, 
So essentially, we will then move as fast as humanly possible, we've heard you there, to, um, to supplement and make sure that the priorities of the seventh administration, the work of Operation Bulindlela, the legal um, opinions are all commissioned and aligned uh, so that we have the best product at the end of the day. Um, I also want to emphasize, Chair, that this is, a, this is an enormous scope that we're talking about. Uh, I would liken it to uh, you know, major reforms in health, for example, or education. It's act actually at the same scale. And so it is absolutely critical that we get it right, that we don't have a process that gets thrown out in court, uh, because that will actually be the worst outcome we can imagine, because then we'll be worse off than we are today. So we need to make sure that, given the scale of this, this is not like the marriage bill, with all due respect. This is not like the immigration amendment bill that we're dealing with. This is a complete systems relook, And so we have to pay att uh, close attention to detail and make sure we get it completely aligned. Then, uh, Chair, I think the other point uh, worth making is on Operation Willing Lela itself. And you will see from the presentation that there are elements in that work that will require regulatory change, first of all, but then also uh, feed into legal uh, changes and legislation. Um, I must say, Chair, I'm very excited about the opportunities we've got through uh, the work that we're doing with Operation Bulindlela. Um, I think the DG will attest that we're moving with real speed to give effect to this priority that uh, is really one of those cross-cutting opportunities we have in government. Because uh, what, we, what we see with Wulin Glela is uh, the ability for us to bring together views from different departments and make sure that when we talk about uh, unlocking the skills that the country needs, for example, unlocking tourism, that we're able to actually do that and create jobs and economic growth in the process. That is really the apex priority uh, of this administration. And so we believe we've got a very strong contribution to make in this space. Just to give you a sense, Chair, um, the trusted tour operator scheme that, we will, uh, that the department will elaborate on, uh, it's got the potential to unlock the Chinese market, for example, uh, as well as the Indian market. Um, a country like Australia, is getting about 1.4 million Chinese tourists a year. We're getting about 93,000. Yep. Now, there is no reason why, why anyone would go to Australia if they could come to South Africa. <laughs> and what we've identified there is the bottlenecks that are created, sometimes through very basic things. I mean, Mandarin documents that we cannot interpret or understand. So it gets into that kind of granular detail where we then say, um, also because these Chinese people, they travel in large tour groups, so you, you'll get 100 or 200 applications at once. And we need to just rethink how we deal with that. And so that's where we've come up with a trusted tour operator scheme, which will vet and secure the tour operator and say, if you bring someone here who overstays or breaks the law, you will actually bear the consequences. So uh, then we are able to process those group applications more effectively. Um, and I really believe if we can get this off the ground, we will see a major impact in terms of boosting tourism in a relatively short uh, uh, period of time. So that's an example of where Will and Lena, um, has real opportunities in the immediate term. But then, of course, Chair, we need to make sure that if Willink Lela is saying for, uh, to us, this is one of the reforms we need in the tourism space, that we actually have it enabled in the legislation. And that's where you can see the link between the two and why it's so important that we have that supplementation process to make sure that we actually align with those kind of priorities. So, Chair, that's a mouthful, but I would invite, if I may, the DG to take over from here and, and fill us in on the details uh, and really highlight, uh, I think, some of the exciting opportunities we've got in this space. Thank you very much.